of this op-ed. This op-ed is amazing. What this guy, this, this is this anonymous writer in the New York Times, and he's saying that the, you know, there's absolute chaos in the Trump White House. Trump himself is impetuous and, and uh, bizarre, and these may not be the words in the op-ed. I'm, I'm not reading from it. I'm characterizing it. That, that he changes his mind, that he's making decisions that put the national security at risk. But don't worry, there's a small band of us who really like things like you know, the, the tax cuts and the deregulation. I mean, this is clearly a Mike Pence Republican who is saying this. And in my opinion, it's, I believe it's probably Mike Pence's speechwriter who wrote this. Pence wants Trump out of there. Pence, Pence believes that God ordained him to be president. He has believed that since he was a teenager. He believed that when he was a right-wing talk show host climbing the political ladder in Indiana. He believed that when he represented Indiana in the House of Representatives. He believed that when he was governor of Indiana. He believes that now as vice president. God wants him to be president. And that's why I think that it's probably Mike Pence's speechwriter, because Mike Pence loves using this word lodestar, and it appears in the op-ed. And his speechwriter would know that. Or it's somebody trying to, you know, throw shade on Pence to, to suggest to Trump, hey, maybe it's Pence. I doubt Pence himself would write it, though, because Mike Pence is really good at not having his fingerprints on the dirty tricks that he does. By the way, the whole you must have a funeral for your fetus law that's being, that was just struck down in Texas, Mike Pence proposed a similar law in Indiana. Just so you know who, you know, how crazy this guy is. But my thoughts on this op-ed... And I would love to hear yours at 202-808-9925. My thoughts on this op-ed are that we have now, we have, we are, and, and, and by the way, in all probability, Rush Limbaugh is going to be saying the exact same thing right now on his show, what, you know, and, and all the right-wing hate radio guys. And I, you know, I have a certain level of discomfort in being in their company, but I, this is my opinion. A coup has happened. There is an unelected group of people inside the White House, inside this administration, who have taken policymaking and administration out of the hands of the guy that was elected by the people, Donald Trump, and put it in their own hands. That is the definition of a coup d'etat. I think that it is highly unconstitutional. I think it's highly illegal what this guy is, conf or the man or woman is confessing to. And, and, I th you know, and I think it's wrong. If, if they really believe that Donald Trump is a menace to the country, such a menace that they have to, you know, they, he talks about uh, General Mattis and John Kelly taking papers off his desk so that he can't see them or sign them. If they really believe that it's that bad, they need to sit down with Mike Pence and Paul Ryan and invoke the 25th Amendment. It's that simple. There is a constitutional process for dealing with a president who does not have the capacity to execute the obligations of his office. There is a clear constitutional process. It was put into place in 1967, in large part in response to the death of John Kennedy, but also in small part in response to back in 19, whatever the year was, 1718, whatever the year when uh, Woodrow Wilson had his stroke and uh, one of his assistants stepped in and said, I'm in charge here. Well, Al Haig did the same thing when Reagan was shot. And it was an attempt to, to clarify exactly what the process is if the president is incapacitated, whether he's been shot, whether he's had a stroke, whether he's dead, or in the case of Donald Trump, whether he's crazy, incompetent, or dangerous, or possibly even an agent of a foreign government. If that is the case, there is a, a constitutional mechanism to remove the president. And in my opinion, instead of bragging to the New York Times that we've got this under control. We're getting our tax cuts, everything's good. We're cutting environmental regulations so the billionaires are gonna get richer, everything's good. Yeah, some people may die from mercury poisoning and stuff, but don't worry about it, lead poisoning, it's not a big deal. Everything's good, we've got this under control. We're gonna restrain the worst impulses of this man. I'm sorry, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying that it's legal, that it's appropriate, that it's reasonable. If the American people elect somebody, now I can make the argument that the American people didn't elect Donald Trump. 
that he's there in part because of interference by Russia. He's there in part because of voter suppression by the Republican Party, that if people who wanted to vote had been allowed to vote, and I'm talking legally registered voters, had been allowed to vote, citizens of the United States, that Donald Trump would not be president. You've got Hillary Clinton, who got three million more votes than Donald Trump. You know, I could build that argument all day long, but that's a completely separate thing. The fact of the matter is that you, we now have a group of people inside the White House or inside the administration being represented by this, quote, senior administration official, end quote, saying, don't worry, we've taken over the government. Well, that scares the hell out of me. Donald Trump is the president of the United States. He should be running the country as he sees fit. And if we think that, if, if you and I think that it's wrong, we should vote his party out of office on November 6th. And if people in his cabinet, if his vice president, if people in Congress actually believe the things that they're constantly whispering to reporters, that the guy is nuts, that he's a narcissist, that, he's a, that he is a psychopath or a sociopath, if they believe that, invoke the damn 25th Amendment and get him out and make Mike Pence president. So who do you think wrote the memo? And what's your opinion of it? Do you think this is a great patriot? Or ha are we right now in the United States for arguably the first time in our history living through a coup d'etat?